Hey everybody, Darren Burrows here. Today I sat down with Randy and Steve of The Reinvestors and they walked me through how they were able to partner with developers in their local area. Steve and Randy admittedly didn't have a lot of experience when it came to development when they first got started, so they did something really smart. On their first transaction, they wholesaled a property to a developer, but they also negotiated the opportunity to learn alongside the developer as they worked through that project. They then took that knowledge and applied it to their second transaction of working with a different developer, but instead of learning beside the developer, they were actually able to partner with them on that next transaction and profit with them on that project. Before we get into it today, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's get into it. Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm with Randy and Steve of The Reinvestors from beautiful Victoria, British Columbia. Randy and Steve are gonna walk us through partnering with developers and what they've been able to accomplish in their real estate portfolio. Guys, it's great to have you here. Before we get going, do you mind just giving us a bit of an intro of who you are and what you do? Thanks a lot, Darren. Uh, we're stoked to be here. Um, my name is Steve. This is Randy, my business partner. Uh, we are the reinvestors for from Victoria and we immediately found a, a great little niche here to provide uh, really great investment opportunities that have cash flow, some value add, some uh, really great ROI. We started doing some single family stuff, you know, up down suited homes uh, that kind of evolved into doing uh, some small multifamilies. And then just over the years, we've continued to uh, just, you know, learn more and push ourselves and grow and meet new people. And we've always kind of wanted to take on some larger projects. So we started looking into development and uh, we ended up finding some really kind of creative deals and partnerships uh, along the way. And, uh, you know, the last four years have been, you know, exhilarating and, you know, being a, uh, an entrepreneur, it's a roller coaster every day. Um, but, uh, you know, it's been, it's been a fantastic journey so far. And, and, you know, our mission statement is to financially educate a million people, inspire them to invest into real estate so they can live a more fulfilled life. And, uh, not only are we, are we doing the investing side of things, but we just love, you know, sharing the expertise that we learn and the strategies that we learn so other people can kind of copy and paste it and be able to, to live a more fulfilled life out of it as well. It's not a common scenario to look at partnering with developers as something that would come to mind. So how did you go about sort of looking at that opportunity and how did the, how did the first opportunity come about? Yeah, it really started with a connection I had. I had a guy in the industry and he was building some single family homes and doing big renovations. And um, at the time I was working in the trade industry and I told him about what we were doing. And he's like, man, I would love to just build something bigger, some multifamily or get involved in that somehow. And I said, well, we're looking at, you know, property all the time. I'll just see if I, if I ever come across something, I'll let you know. And so Steve and I just put it on our radar. And as we were looking into new towns, we found this one town that was, uh, you know, we went and just to, uh, you know, we get taught a lot inside uh, our training program and stuff, just like put yourself out of comfort zones, go talk to the cities, go find out what things are doing. And we built a bit of a relationship with the city that we were looking at. And they told us that they're coming up with some new blanket zoning. They're just going to zone everything multifamily. And so we're like, wow, that's really cool. So we went and found some houses and uh, put under contract and started doing some diligence and went to this guy and said, look, you said you wanted the property. Why don't we just wholesale this off to you? But the trade-off is we actually want to learn the whole process. We want to sit shotgun. We want to see, you know, a part of the whole thing as you go through the city, as you go through the, um, all the, all the um, stuff you have to go through with getting the building permit and going the development permit, it was already zoned. So we didn't have to do any rezoning, um, but just getting all the permits and stuff and dealing with hydro. And we want to be a part of the entire build. And so what we did is we did that. We put the package together, we sold it to him. And then we learned along the entire way how development actually works, the language, the game, the ups and downs, the headaches, the trauma, the everything that comes along with it, the uh, risk versus reward. And that just gave us a lot of confidence going in to, to build more partnerships like that. Um, you know, we, we basically had zero risk in that game, but got all the knowledge that we wanted. So it was a really cool way to structure a partnership with someone that we found the lot and the deal and just said, here, you guys build it. You take everything. We just want to learn through you. So that's how we started. Was it, was it a partnership or was it a, just like a learning opportunity, but uh, were you profit sharing as well or how did that work? Yeah, it was a learning opportunity with a profit share on the back end. They ended up turning into a rental. So we ended up just washing our hands with it and saying, you know what, guys, um, we're okay walking. We got enough knowledge that we didn't need any of the profit share on the back end. They wanted to keep the property as a rental property for a few more years um, before selling it. And it was a good friend of mine. So basically what we did was we put the lot under contract and then we um, went to the city and found out all the information we needed and we put it into a package for them. And then we went to them and said, hey, here's the people you want to contact to the city. Here's what the zoning is. Here's what we know about what you can build on it. Here's all the information that we've gotten. And here's the assignable lot that we have. 
take it all. And so they just paid us a flat fee for that as a wholesale fee. And then um, because I knew the guy, I was semi friends with him. Um, we negotiated a back end profit with it. Hey, we're going to come along the way. If you guys make profit on this deal, we'll be a share in it. Um, they, at the end, uh, we, you know, the handshake deal at the end of the day said, you know what, we don't want, uh, and we don't need any profit from it, but we loved learning along the way. So being able to walk away from that one with the knowledge that we had was worth more than probably the back end profit that we were going to get. So what was the timeline from that project from like under contract to eventually completion to rental units where you guys essentially exited? I think it was probably about a year and a half to go through the whole process. We learned a lot though. We learned about, um, where we are, you know, the hydro. Um, stuff that goes on, you know, when you start building a sixplex in an area that's not zoned or that's not ready for it, having to go through, you know, how do you bring water down the street? How do you bring extra power down the street? How do you go about um, all the variancing? How do you go about the variancing for parking? All the stuff that is involved in development, we were, you know, hands on in every conversation. Um, everything from how do you get contractors in? How do you bid stuff like this? How does it go about? So it was really cool from our end to really be hands on involved in watching every process go step by step by things that, you know, we basically got hit with every brick wall that you could on this property. And so um, it slowed down quite a bit. So the timeline might be a little bit slower, uh, but the developer was doing everything themselves as well. So they were, you know, it wasn't a streamlined process. They were learning along the way with us. So it was really cool to see them struggle, how they overcame it and then how we can move on with it. So about a year and a half from the time we did it. And then we actually went and bought two other lots in that area and did the same thing with the same developer. So we went and found the lots, put them on a contract and wholesale them out. So now they're actually building in that same area, multiple different areas, multiple different stuff. So just, again, the same contracting wholesale fee for uh, the other lots that we put on a contract as well. This is a, something that you wanted to get into long term. Um, this is why you, you went through this. So what were you able to apply that to after that project? Were you able to move it forward to something else and, and basically go at, on, uh, go at it on your own? Or were you still wanting to work with them as developers? The year and a half that we spent with that, uh, with that developer and the relationship that was there, what it allowed us to do is, is get all of that, um, all that knowledge that, you know, there's that saying, you don't know what you don't know, right? So not that we knew it all, but it showed us different highlighted pieces of things that we just had never even thought about before. So it just leveled us up on, on, on our education platform with, you know, with developing. So it made us feel a little bit more confident about, you know, taking the reins a little bit on a, on a project. And so uh, as we continued to kind of like shop around looking for, uh, you know, new developers, looking for new types of deals, you know, we had this additional little bit of confidence, you know, after going through that one process um, and everything that we learned from it. And it allowed us to have a completely new type of conversation with developers. You know, prior to, we were just like, yeah, I can find dirt, no problem. <laughs> And then, you know, as we went through that and had all this additional knowledge, you know, we could sit there across the table from a developer and like really chat out the entire process. And it really is like put us in a different light uh, to the new networks that we we're kind of uh, jumping into. So we ended up getting connected with a, a developer that was from out of province, but doing a couple of different uh, larger deals here in BC and on the island of Victoria. And we uh, started exploring opportunities together, some real big ones, some real small ones. And then uh, he brought one to us and said, hey, uh, here's a layup for us. Uh, do you guys want to be a part of this? And for us, it was like, this isn't a layup. This is, you know, a triple or home run even maybe like, heck yeah, we want to be a part of this. And, you know, it was a type of project where it's a 12 lot subdivision. You go in there, uh, it's already zoned right. You just got to get your development permit, build some houses, sell some houses, check all the boxes and then exit. And it's not a rental, it's not a hold. It's, it's just, you know, a, a two-year term where uh, we established the, uh, the same type of, of mentorship role as well. So, you know, uh, we were very involved in the previous one where we got to kind of sit in the corner, be on the fly on the wall, um, you know, listen to the conversation and learn. Whereas this one that we're doing now, it's more of a partnership. So uh, we have a voice that's, that, that uh, will be heard through it. And we get, you know, to be a part of the decision-making processes and, and, you know, I think they're relying on us a little bit too for, you know, local knowledge, what, you know, design should be, what finishing should look like, how we market, market it to, uh, you know, our market, uh, because, you know, the BC market would be, you know, different than the Alberta market where he's from. So um, it allowed us to, to break into uh, new networks and uh, from that new network, you know, a really great opportunity for us to continue our learning and to, um, you know, make a profit and deliver a kick-ass return to investors came about 
And just going through the due diligence on it, it just looked like it was an absolute gem. And uh, so we, we jumped into it, you know, two feet, closed on it a couple of weeks ago and uh, everything's moving forward uh, really well so far. You essentially went out and found the land um, and then raised capital for, for the development. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, actually the developer uh, had the land. Um, so it was a deagle that he knew about and it was going through a foreclosure process. And so he said, hey, uh, even before the foreclosure process, we were trying to bid on it and we were trying to work directly with the seller. And, you know, funny story, we were trying to buy it for 700K and the developer was, uh, you know, the previous owner of it uh, was firm on 720. And Randy and I were sitting here like, you know, 20 grand, let's not just like, let's, let's find a lose a battle to win the war, right? Yeah. And uh, our guy was like, no, 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 hold tight, hold tight. I know where this guy's at, hold tight. Ended up going through foreclosure and was like, oh, who knows if we're even going to get this anymore. And then we ended up getting it for $20,000 less than that at 680. So it was like, score. Obviously, he knows what he was talking about. Um, and so our part of it was to, uh, to bring the finance and the investment into the, into the project. And so we, we ended up raising capital. And at first, you know, it, it looked like a, a triple. And then as we dug into the market, it's on Salt Spring Island here, just out of Victoria. And as we dug into the market, um, one of the things that, two things really stood out to me. One, it was uh, basically on the edge of the downtown area uh, in Ganges, which is like the hub of Salt Spring. And it was the only allowed infill project on the force in the foreseeable future. And so, everybody wants to be closer to town. Uh, and so we have the only supply available. That means that we're going to be, you know, a, a hot demand. And then secondly, it is within a strata, but it's the only strata in Ganges that allows rentals. So not only can we cater to, you know, uh, entry level uh, housing, whether that be, you know, seniors or, or families, um, but we can also kind of cater to the investor that wants to buy it as, you know, potentially just a summer home or, you know, a vacation rental, somewhere along those lines. And so as we got dug deeper into the, the numbers, we're like, yeah, this is, this is a diamond in the rough. This is a home run for sure. And we got uh, more confident about pitching it and bringing it, you know, bringing it up to investors. And, and um, we, we ended up raising the capital for it, uh, which, was, which was our duties. And, and now we get to uh, not only ride shotgun uh, through the project, but it's kind of like those you know, uh, driver school cars where both of you have the steering wheel, the gas pedal and the brake. And we get to go through the project together with somebody making sure that we don't uh, crash into a, uh, rock wall. When you're raising capital for a development project like this, there's obviously the land costs. Are you raising the, the part of the build costs as well? You're financing some of that. What's the process there? Yeah. So this one's unique in the sense of the deal that we got on it. So a lot of times, you know, you're going to bring in uh, about 30% uh, and then you need some sort of liquidity and then you get your commercial or construction financing to get you through the draws and the phases. Uh, this one because we got such a deal on it, and as soon as we break it up into the 12 individual titles, our appraisal is gonna be you know, over double what, um, what we bought it for. So we have this massive amount of instant equity just through that, that we can leverage. Um, and so uh, what the game plan is, is we're going to use 12 lots, we're gonna build a, one of the duplexes first. And in the duplex, um, we'll use, you know, the construction financing through that and build financing on that. And then we'll, we'll use half of it as their showroom and then we'll sell the other half, take that cash and be able to go and pour some foundations on what we think are going to be like the next four or five lots that are going to be higher, high, uh, higher you know, desirability. And then um, when we, you know, when we sell each lot, we'll, we'll build a home and we'll get, uh, you know, build the financing through most likely the, the new owner for that lot. Um, and then what, will be great as the project evolves is once we sell about half of the lots, so there's gonna be so much cash in the bank that we can self-finance. So if the market does slow down, this is one of the things that we've talked early in the days is like, what are our exit strategies? So if the market stalls like halfway through, there's enough money in the bank that we can go and finance our own builds and maybe use that as a rental, you know, build a couple, you know, sell them after, you know, a couple of months here and there, collect that cash, put it back into you know, our account and just use that as, you know, uh, continued momentum to finish off the project as fast as possible. Investors often look at development. I think they think of large scale, you know, like hundred units, 200 units. And most people probably don't even consider getting into it because I think of that, that perception that there is a, a large scale uh, element to it. So um, if you guys could give advice uh, individually, I guess, uh, to anybody who wants to get into this space, do you have a piece of advice that you would offer to anybody who wants to maybe potentially partner with developers? 
I think the coolest thing about this deal was that when we structured the partnership, <clears throat> we started the conversation with the developer in the sense of, hey, we're not just looking for somebody to come in and build with us. We're looking to build and establish a partnership, someone long-term that we can, we have the ability to raise some capital. That's usually as a developer, not their strong point. They, they're good at building, they're good at going through the process, but getting the money in is usually a headache for them. And we said, we have some ability to raise some capital. And he kind of took us under his wing and said, you know what guys, if you can deliver on projects, let's see what you can do. So when we started that, it was, that's what really built it. We showed, you know, we told them all about the Duncan deal that we did. We told them that we'd work for less than normal. And we really just kind of said like, Hey, we're more interested in learning about how to build 12 houses than we actually are about, you know, getting the, the first paycheck. Cause we know that if we can learn how to do 12, we can go to 200 now, then we can go start getting into the bigger stuff. And as soon as, you know, our attitude portrayed to him of what we really wanted, that we are in it for the long term, that we are hustlers, that we were willing to work and grind, you know, he would be not testing us, but putting little things in front of us to see how we operated. How do we handle pressure? How do we handle stress? And as soon as we came through all that, um, the relationship got better and stronger and deeper to now we're talking about building a 30 unit building with him uh, on a lot that we already own and some other stuff. So, you know, we, we started out small, but we started out finding someone that we could build a partnership with that was already established. And then we um, really just built that trust to the point where he felt comfortable in us bringing us into the deal that he found. And so it was really, I think that's probably like the biggest takeaway is like, don't go out there and try and find the 200 lot subdivision, go try and find the biggest developer and bring them in. It's feeling confident and then finding someone you're comfortable with and then meeting them where they're comfortable helping you at. And then he's now taking us under his wing and showing us, you know, this whole process because he sees the long-term vision as well. And for me, I think it would be uh, know what product type is going to sell or rent in the market you're building. So a uh, quick example, like if you're building a three-story walk-up apartment building, but the majority of your, you know, your market are seniors, you know, that's not going to go over very well if, you know, you got this little 80-year-old granny trying to climb three sets of stairs. So something along those lines, not everybody kind of thinks of early in the days ago, like, sweet, 20,000 square feet, quick math, I can build this many places, great, let's go. Which kind of leads me into just a bit of a rabbit hole in the sense of one thing that we did in the first deal that we talked about is we went to the city and we said, hey, what do you guys want to see? Which was for them, they're like, ooh, is this? Because typically they get, hey, I've got this project, I've got this land, this is the project I want to build. And it may not even completely like fit into what the city wants to see. And so us approaching the city from a standpoint of what do you want, we'll build it, um, just allowed us to, to create a really great relationship with them. And instead of, you know, a salmon fighting upstream, uh, we got to kind of like ride the flow a little bit and it just made it a, a little bit smoother of a process. I'm going to try something new today, guys. You're going to be my guinea pigs. I hope you don't mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd seem to do this to you guys. I put you on the spot. <laughs> Almost. It's just because I know you're pros and you can handle anything. Uh, I'm going to call it real estate rapid fire. How's that? We're just going to go through some quick questions. Uh, either one of you can jump in and answer. Uh, first question is going to be, what's your favorite book? doesn't have to be a real estate book. What's your favorite book? Never split the difference. Chris Voss, uh, one of the best negotiating books, sales books I've ever read in my life and huge amounts of value. Probably the best bang for your buck book I've ever had. Uh, how to win friends and influence people. Those two books um, are Steve's, Steve and I's Bible to everything we do from landlording, tenanting to relationships. Everything we do is between those two books. Uh, best deal you guys have ever done? I got to say the fiveplex. Fiveplex for sure. Yeah, we did a burr on a fiveplex, which is like in just one of the greatest markets here in Victoria. It's steps away from downtown, up and coming area. Uh, creative financed it. It uh, just, everything came together on it biggest learning experience in uh, real estate investing so far? Raising capital and learning that it's never secured until it's in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. I, I'd say having a partner. Um, you know, it's, it, it's taken a lot for us in a sense to, to learn how each other operate and to communicate effectively. We've grown a lot as individuals. We've grown a lot as a business. And a lot of that has come from just the efforts that Randy and I put into building our relationship together internally. Your favorite way to give back? So for the last four years, we've been doing a meetup and uh, we take 100% of ticket revenue that we get out of that meetup and we give it that back to Kids for Victoria. And lastly, how do people get a hold of you if they want to get in touch? We have an incredible online presence uh, at The Reinvestors on Facebook and Instagram and uh, on our community there. Um, and then also online at uh, thereinvestors.ca.
Guys, thanks so much for joining me, Steve, Randy. I'll talk to you guys very soon. Enjoy the weather in beautiful British Columbia. And uh, hopefully at some point we'll be able to travel across the country safely and we'll, uh, we'll get together and uh, talk real estate for I'm sure many hours upon hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to book a whole week to come visit. That's right. It sounds good to me. Thanks so much, guys, for being here. Thanks, Darren. All right. Thanks a lot, Darren. I hope you guys enjoyed Randy and Steve walking through the process of how to partner with a developer. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenvoros.com. With that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey, and I look forward to hearing your success stories very soon.